Hi YouTube, welcome to the Important Outdoors. My name is Michael and today we have a little job to fix on the John Deere tractor. So I've owned the John Deere tractor now for probably about 18 months and I've used it to clear snow on the property for about two winters I would say. We're almost at the end of my second winter and I noticed that one of the feet that controls the bottom of the plow, the height, is actually worn away. And I'm not sure why that happened so quickly because we don't get that much snow in medicine hat, but it obviously has. Uh, the blade does lean slightly down towards that side. And I gotta be honest, I did tweak the blade once. Uh, I thought I'd strained it out, but even so, it should ride on those pads and level up. One pad's still intact, but the other one, the bottom is obviously gone. So in the little project today, we're gonna take off the existing one that's intact, and we're gonna strengthen that one, and we're gonna take off the broken one, and rebuild that one. So it's gonna be a quick, fun project, and it's something I need to do, because it's currently snowing, and I know I've gotta use a tractor pretty soon. So it should be a nice, quick one. Let's get started. Okay, so we've got our two pieces. This is the one that's intact. Hopefully you can see that a bit better. So you can see this one's been ground. Not that much, but this one looks like it's been ground all the way down. So we just need to recreate this part and I think I'll re redo that. So the right way to do this would be to take some hard facing rod or wire actually build this up or to maybe put something like AR500 plate on there to give it a bit more resistance. I suspect these are just mild steel. Yeah, I don't think they're anything special. So I did go to Princess Auto and I picked up some flat bars. This is 3 16 by one and a half. So just makes life a lot easier when you're not having to uh, shape flat stock. I can just cut off the length that I need and uh, bend it to whatever I need to fix it. Uh, this is on sale for like $22, I think. So steel is not cheap these days, but $20 for this. I, I think it's probably the best price I'm going to get in town. So if you caught one of my last videos where I actually picked up this welding table for Princess Auto and I said I had some projects to do, this is one of them. Uh, I did pick up some extra stuff to make my job even easier. So they do sell these clamps. It's a pack of four of them. And these things will just locate these holes. Pop that in. I can hold stuff to the table really nicely. That's gonna come in handy for what I'm doing. So the clamps themselves will work pretty good. Uh, unfortunately, they do have plastic threads on these. So I'm not sure how long that's gonna last, especially if you put some heat to it. But we'll see how they go. There are four in the box. And it wouldn't be too bad to actually replace these with a, like a steel Acme thread by the looks of it. This is a nice machined piece here and this looks like a plated steel so we'll see how they they fare they weren't terribly expensive so that's good and the other thing I picked up was this little accessory box and get it open and inside this various 
types of uh, inserts for the table. So this is just a simple like drop-in dog, something like that. Uh, this one is threaded on one side and it has a V in it. So, so these would be great for putting in a round bar. Let's see how that works. Okay, so I've got a piece of round bar. do we get oh, this type of hold down as well and these ones are magnetic I think yeah So I figured out this was a sliding clamp that you can use to push work against a solid surface and it seems to work pretty good. It just bolts underneath the bottom of the table and you can adjust it to push out the work against a stop for instance and then lock it off. And it threads into the V-block type connectors. As there were also instructions in the box, I think this is how it goes together but I'm not 100% sure so if you can let me know in the comments I'd be very grateful. Shorter actually. Okay, I'm going to see if I can actually bend this on the vise. A bit doubtful without using any heat. Give it a go. Oh yeah, we'll go. So I think I've got it pretty close. Let's see, hopefully right here. It's not exact, but I can always tweak it afterwards. I don't think this is actually critical anyway, because uh, it just slides up at the back. So when the, it just bumps over. So as long as it's smooth, I think it will be good. So yeah. Close enough for government work. Here we have Lizzie as me helping in the shop today and Simon. Lizzie's going for her second set of jabs today. Okay, so we've got our nice new piece of steel. I want to do something like this.
Okay, so we got two pieces. This is just a bit of grinding on there. So it's not going to be stressed very much. I think that's going to work fine. So all I need to do now is just trim this. And then I'm going to build up this one. I think just run a couple of passes across it. And that should do it, I think. Rear liquor paint. Okay, they're not exactly the same angle at the top, but it's close enough. So now I'm gonna build up a bit of weld on the top of this one. So I think we're almost done. It's not perfect, but it's gonna work. No problems at all. I welded up that pad on this one and I'm just gonna keep an eye on see how this one wires. And then I'll probably just overlay the same or maybe chop a piece of the 3 and just weld a pad on there that I can replace. And I'm just gonna spray a bit of paint on to stop it corroding the exposed parts. But the bottom's gonna get obviously worn away anyway. And then we'll reinstall them back on the machine. Here I'm just placing a couple of washers underneath the bottom of the blade so I can raise it up the right amount so I can set the depth of the shoes. All done with our little project and the tractor's back in service and I can finally plow my driveway and make it a lot easier than hand shoveling. So these are the little clamps that we used. We didn't actually use them that much, I thought I'd use them more. Uh, these things we didn't really test out too much but I think the star of the show was actually these two little magnets. I got these again from Princess Auto. 
But overall, the, the table is actually very good for what it is, for the price you pay for this table and uh, a few extra clamps and things. You can do pretty accurate kind of production work. It's obviously not a heavy duty table like you would get in a proper welding shop, but for a home gamer, I think this setup is ideal. I can knock out lots of different projects. The only thing I would maybe add is a vise, but at the moment I don't really wouldn't do that because I would tend to use it for holding pieces that I'm gonna grind on, and I don't really wanna grind with all that iron dust around the welder and all the rest of it, like keep this just for welding and grind elsewhere. So I think for now, this is the way it's gonna be set up. So I hope you've enjoyed the video and you found this useful. And until next time, take care. You have no idea how satisfying it is to have all your welding tools on one cart. I can literally pull this out, bring out the power and the gas, and I can pretty much weld anywhere in my garage. When you have the right tools and they're accessible, it just makes starting that next job a little bit easier to do. And as always, thank you very much for watching. If you like my videos, leave me a comment, maybe a thumbs up, and don't forget to subscribe.